Tony Stark, além de bilionário, é um gênio. E nas horas vagas vira super-herói. O personagem de Homem de Ferro, por necessidade e por gosto, vai fundo na ciência. Ele se tornou um popstar no mundo tecnológico. Está longe de ser aquele estereótipo do cientista de óculos de fundo de garrafa e jaleco branco. Chega ao ponto de construir em casa um acelerador de partículas. Fora da tela, há quem também tenha tentado uma versão doméstica da fissão atômica. E esse jovem, apaixonado por teorias, acabou se tornando uma estrela da divulgação científica. I'm Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm a theoretical physicist and a science fiction fan. Join me as I show you how to make sci-fi science. No programa de hoje você vai ver uma entrevista exclusiva com Michio Kaku. O físico americano, filho de japoneses, é um dos maiores defensores da controversa teoria das cordas. Não se preocupe, vamos tentar entender isso ao longo do programa. O Dr. Kaku é pop, tem site, frequenta os principais talk shows americanos, participa de séries de TV e escreve best-sellers. Seu livro mais recente explora, a sério, conceitos que mais parecem coisa de ficção, como viagens no tempo, teletransporte, campos de força e mantos de invisibilidade. For the last 10 years, Tachi and his team have been perfecting the nearest thing on Earth to a cloak of invisibility. Their invention works like this. A camera behind the subject takes images of their background. These pictures are projected into a box of mirrors called a combiner, and then onto the cloak. Look through the combiner and you see a composite image of the original projection and the light reflecting off the cloak. <laughs> I see. When he's not moving, it looks like he's gone. Pretty amazing stuff. O espaço aberto ciência e tecnologia está só começando. A repórter Leila Sterenberg aproveitou a rápida passagem do Dr. Caco pelo Brasil e gravou um bate-papo exclusivo com ele em Joinville, Santa Catarina. Lá, ele fez uma palestra para uma plateia cheia de executivos e empresários. Entre os temas, o que o futuro nos reserva? Qual a importância da educação científica para as novas gerações? E o que é de fato considerado hoje possível e impossível dentro da ciência? Physics of the impossible, a scientific exploration into the world of phasers, force fields, teleportation, time travel. This is your uh, very successful latest book. It became a TV series, if I'm not mistaken. And it does have a very long title and a uh, mind-blowing message. Very little is actually now impossible, right? <laughs> yeah, amazing things are now possible. Um, I teach physics, and we used to say invisibility, impossible. You cannot make an object invisible. Now we're doing it. Uh, microwaves, infrared radiation, and now visible light. You can actually make objects disappear which was incredible, but now in the laboratory we do this. Teleportation, you know, zapping people across the room, we can't do that yet, but we can beam atoms across the room, and eventually we'll beam them into outer space, maybe the moon. So in the future, far future, maybe you can disappear and reappear someplace else. So these are fantastic concepts that we physicists work on. So, uh, you have used the system of uh, classes 1, 2, and 3 of impossibilities. Class 1 impossibilities are technologies that are impossible today, mm -hmm. but uh, that do not violate uh, uh, the known laws of physics. Class 2 impossibilities are those uh, that sit at the very edge, right, of mm -hmm. our That's understanding. Right. And class 3 impossibilities are those that violate uh, uh, the known laws of physical, uh, mm -hmm. physics. So, uh, class three, of course, are the, you know, less likely to become possible, but what if we do have eventually a fundamental uh, a shift in the way we see things, we understand physics? That's right, class one impossibilities are what you see in the movies. 
you see people with telepathic powers, uh, the power of invisibility, starships. We will have much of this technology in the coming decades to maybe a century. Already, we can put computer uh, chips on the brain and actually control other computers. And we can actually read thinking. We can actually see thoughts going back and forth. And we can actually control robots this way. Wow. Just like in the movie with Bruce Willis, surrogates. You can put on a helmet and control another robot just by thinking about it. Imagine a world Imagine. where you can be anyone. Take a seat in your STEM chair and just look how 